Good morning. I need to open this video with a slight warning. Some of the stuff you see today might be distressing. This isn't going to be my normal style video that is just fun and exciting. This is more serious but also more important. So please watch, learn and watch through to the end but it's going to be slightly different to my normal style of video. Let me start off by giving you a brief background. Between 1975 and 1979, the Khmer Rouge ruled Cambodia after the civil war between 1970 and 1975. So this was only 40 years ago. And in that time, they led a genocide which wiped out roughly a quarter of the population. There's no confirmed number but estimates say between 1.7 million and 3 million people were wiped out in those four years. The Khmer Rouge regime executed anyone with connections to the previous government, any professional, any intellectual, and anyone who wasn't seen as a pure Cambodian, so any other ethnicity. One of the main places that this happened became known as the Killing Fields. This is Chong Ek. This is one of the killing fields and it's the principal monument to what happened. And that's what I'm going to show you around this morning. Everyone who visits is given one of these headsets, which is an audio tour. So I'm just going to give you information as I go around. Just been told that there's, or there was, a giant speaker system set up in the middle of these killing fields to blare out propaganda and also to play music at night to cover people's screams. This behind me is a sugar palm tree and I don't know if you can tell but the ridges of those stems, I guess you call them, are so sharp that it was too expensive to waste bullets on killing people. So instead, they'd use anything they could find. And in this case, they used the leaves to slit the prisoners' throats. Those mounds I just showed you are mass graves. They're all mass graves that used to be deeper and have slowly filled over time. This here are some of the clove, cloves and bones that have washed up when the rainy season comes and some of it still washes up now so they still find bones and teeth and cloves from the victims. Sorry about the wind by the way. I'm trying my best, but it is really windy today. That tree I just showed you is known as the killing tree. And be prepared for this because it's the most horrific thing I've heard today. It's known as the killing tree because that's where execution officers used to kill babies and children and they used to grab them by their feet or their legs and swing them against the tree, caving their heads. They'd do it late at night after prying them away from their mothers and do it set to a background of revolutionary music. The reason is they didn't want anyone seeking revenge. They killed the children and they killed the whole families if they killed one person because they didn't want anyone in the future seeking revenge against the government. And now, fair warning, because I'm going to show you some of the bones and skulls that remain of the victims. So if you don't want to see that, 
just skip ahead to there. Behind me is the memorial stupa, which houses some of the victims' skulls that they found here. Just imagine for a second your own country, and imagine a quarter of the population being wiped out, people being taken from their homes, forced to come here, knowing probably that this will be their last stop, this will be their final resting place. Lots of them, lots of the people that came here were transported from a prison in Phnom Penh and that's where I'm heading now. This is S21, a one school that was turned into a prison for anyone that the Khmer Rouge thought would be against their regime. They tortured people here, they held people here, and tried to get them to admit that they were working with the CIA or the Russians. And lots of people did admit it eventually, whether it was true or not. It's tough to know what you do under torture. But those people then did admit it, were taken off to the killing fields after admitting their crimes here. Behind me, you can see the gallows. When it was a school, it was where kids would exercise using the ropes to climb up. But as soon as the Khmer Rouge started using this as a prison, it was turned into an interrogation and torture technique. People would have their hands tied behind their back, lifted up, and made to admit whatever the Khmer Rouge wanted. Just been reading some more information. Apparently, S21, Tul Slong Prison, which is where I am, was originally used for killing and burying the prisoners as well in 1975, but gradually there wasn't enough space, so that's why they started sending them off to the killing fields. They couldn't keep up with the amount of people they were killing. This is one of the rooms with the prison. How small that is. Just so you have an idea of the size. Harrowing is the word. Even the ambience. No one's really talking. No one's joking. It's just, I don't know, evil in the world that this was allowed to happen. The only thing you can hope is that we learn from it and don't let it happen again. Who knows? Anyway, I'm gonna leave now. I need to get back and get ready because I've got an overnight bus to pack for to head to Bangkok tonight. I'll speak to you in a bit. One, two, three. Can I just shake your hand? Oh, yeah. Thank Thank you. You. Really nice to meet you. Yeah. Oh. That man was one of the original survivors from this prison. <laughs> I didn't expect that, but what a pleasure. Anyway, now 
I'm gonna head back to the hostel. What can I say about today? As heartbreaking as it is to hear that stuff, and it, it is difficult to be there. I think it's so important to do that when you travel to a new country, especially one with such a recent and rich recent history as Cambodia. When you think about it, pretty much everyone living here nowadays will have had their family affected in some way, really. Yeah. Anyway, I'm about to set off to Bangkok now. I'm just down by the river because my hostel was just far too loud to do the outro. <laughs> so I just popped down to the river, which is right next to the hostel. This is where loads of cheap hostels are. And then I'm gonna go back now and jump on my bus to Bangkok. And that's where I'm gonna start my next video. I'm gonna show you the journey from Phnom Penh, from here, all the way through to Bangkok. And yeah, thank you for watching, and this is my life.